nice to meet you and thank you for coming. I want to talk about the spark for creativity. Um, and I'm going to tell a little bit about my story along the way. So who think themselves as creative people? Raise your hand, please. Cool. <laughs> half, half. So, and, and before we go more into detail about this, does anyone, know, anyone here know where in the world grows trees that has a square-shaped tree trunk? No? Aha, so I'm going to tell you this in the end. So wait, wait, wait until the end of the six minutes, okay? Uh, so where is the source of creativity? Um, maybe some of you have started to see the whole conversation about the right brain or the left brain. Uh, the right or the left hemisphere, but what is the source of creativity? I have a, 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 an idea. Uh, I have a fun confession to make. Uh, I'm a nerd. I have been a nerd for many, many years. I fell in love with computer when I was seven years old. Uh, an MS-DOS was my first computer. And up until a point, I felt like life and, and, and everyone was logic. And as I started to work in computer cosynthesis, I saw many, many times my boss or the leaders were really, really bad people in my logic. Uh, they were only exploring the, the workers and the way they were doing things, like trying to maximize the profits. Uh, so I did what seemed logical at the time. I quit it and I opened my own company. And it was okay for some time, but then as I grow uh, responsible for the results, I started to behave a lot like the bosses I used to condemn. <laughs> so I did um, some self-reflection and I realized that I knew a lot about machines, but not really much about people. And I was becoming uh, a lot like a robot, like angry when people didn't follow my logic. So I did it the, same, the reasonable thing at a time. I quitted my own company and I went to study psychology through expressive arts. It was a total leap on the other end of the spectrum. I thought, well, I don't know if I'm going to learn anything, but they must know something about humans uh, better than me. And, and so a new journey in my life began. And one of the things that came out of this postgrad was a, a project with a, a buddy of mine called the Creativity Gym. So he started to cr uh, train creativity because in expressive arts therapy, most of the mental disorders or, 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 or sickness is rooted in the lack of creative expression. When someone doesn't express their creativity or their emotions or their feelings, they start to get ill. And we created the seven muscles of creativity. It was a bunch of fun. We had so many crazy workshops, people coming weekly to train their creativity. But sometimes I just felt something missing. And in those days, I, I work with individuals and with teams trying to help them um, understand what they truly want, how to be creative or how to be uh, better uh, treating between each other. And sometimes there's always a block, something that stops them. And I started wondering why we don't do the things that we know we should do. Like pretty much everyone nowadays knew, know they should meditate. They should stop eating meat. That we should stop treating uh, animals like crap or throwing plastic in the ocean. Or we just need to be more emotional intelligence. But we don't do that. I then became a father. And then life just removed the, 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 the carpet from my feet. He just punched me in the face. I started to be confronted with questions that I didn't even knew I had because now I had another being looking up to me. And then one day we were playing hide and seek in my house. So you know, like hide and seek when you go looking for, for the people who are hiding. And I was feeling so much joy and fear from being caught by my daughter, that I, it just hit me, just like a lightning bolt. I know what blocks people from doing things, what they know they should do. It's the thing that it's also present in animals, so it's not exclusively ours as a species, but in my belief, it's what drives human behavior and perhaps human evolution. We have our 
pain or pleasure addictions. And this is pretty much how we create our habits. But there is a super state that is neither pain or pleasure. It was what I was feeling when I was waiting for my daughter to come around the corner and find me. It is curiosity. And curiosity is so natural in kids. I see it in my daughter. And, and this made me realize what stops us from doing what we know we should do is that somehow our curiosity was blocked with the bazillion of no's that we receive from our fathers or at school or you, sh you shouldn't do this or the sky is not green. We started to block our curiosity and we are just addicted to pain or pleasure. So I believe that the first fish that got out of the water, it was not because of the tides that forced it to grow limbs. I think it was curious about it. And if you think about it, there is no emotional intelligence without curiosity. If you're not curious about emotions, if your emotions are the others, you don't get emotional intelligence. If you're not curious about the user, you don't do user-centric design. If you're not curious about experimenting and trying out failing fast, you don't do agile. And if you're not curious about yourself, you don't do self-awareness. You don't become self-aware. So I took a leap when I did that postgrad, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I was extremely curious about what was on the other side. So if creativity takes courage, curiosity takes faith. Faith in not knowing what is going to happen. Thank you. Thank you.